Hello, I'm Supriya Peshan. I'm the second year resident physician not in Community Hospital. I'm here with Dr. Eng. Can you introduce yourself, Dr. Eng? Sure. I'm Dr. Kathy Eng at Vanderbilt Ingram Cancer Center. Thank you so much, Dr. Eng, for having us here and joining this panel and giving us a lot of information about the new treatment trials and the treatment regimens. So just tell us two takeaway points. Uh, from this panel of discussion, which you really want to emphasize in the community practice? I think the most important thing is molecular sequencing, doing next generation sequencing for our patients to help um, determine the uh, type of therapy to be, to be provided in the sequence of therapy. Mm -hmm. um, the other take home points, I would say it's still a, a large part of our discussion. It's not set in stone as the role of circulating tumor DNA. Okay, yeah, thanks. Um, uh, you have already talked a lot about the Fresco 2 study. And you have been the investigator for that study. One of them, yes. Yeah. And also with the consistent survival benefit and the manageable safety profile of the Fresco 2 study. So how do you envision frucitinib being integrated into the current treatment like therapy for the refractory metastatic CRCs? You know, the reality is frucitinib is approved in the United States mm -hmm. in the third line plus setting. Mm -hmm. And um, we have also have rendorafinib. We also have TAS-102 plus bevacizumab. Mm -hmm. And it's really just a discussion with the patient. They all are, have benefits for the patient, but they, but they have different side effects. Okay. 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 Um, just give us a little bit of insight about like joining these conferences. And do you think they're really beneficial for the residents and the fellows and also the current community oncologist? I think, well, I know it's very difficult for community oncologists to attend these sessions in person. However, I think the virtual se sessions uh -huh. are very beneficial for the community practice setting. And ideally, it would be great if they can attend in person and make the connections and really see the presentations up front. Um, so I think these meetings are uh, very important to remain on top of current developments in GI malignancies uh -huh. um, and big ask us for all malignancies. Um, for residents and fellows, I think it's really important um, if you're able to bond with other residents and fellows when attending these events because they're very largely uh, faculty driven. Right. Um, and so it can be um, a bit challenging if you're, you are unfamiliar with the territory. But I, heard, I highly encourage junior faculty or sorry, residents and fellows to attend if they can. Um, once again, it's, a, it's sponsorship as well. Yeah. And it's also important for the mentorship. Because you meet a lot of mentors in these kind of conferences. You can, yes. Potentially. It depends upon you know, how much you're willing to interact with individuals that you don't know. But yes. Yeah. Uh, any piece of advice you want to give to the community oncologist at this point of time? Um, once again, I think it's just there's a lot of new developments, mm -hmm. especially in GI cancers. But more importantly, for what I, I focus on, which is colorectal cancer, I think this year is going to be a good year for additional developments. Okay. Thank you so much, Dr. Yang, for coming here and giving us so much, you know, insights about the treatment regimens and the clinical trials. We are glad to have you here. Thank you so much.